get some nice... Is it ASMR? What is it? Yeah, it's that. Anyway, welcome to this week's video. This is my second video of this sort of type where I'm going to talk about some of the things that may help people who are beginning out at photography uh, to get a grasp of what's going on uh, when you pick up your camera. And yeah, so last time we talked about your camera. Uh, we talked about aperture, shutter speed, ISO, I think was the other one. Um, and how those settings, you know, affected your photographs and you know what you did to do them. So this week we're going to move on to something a little bit more um, meh. I don't know. I don't know how to describe it. A little bit more. A little something that's what not everybody does consider when they pick up a camera is composition. Um, it's like <laughs> in every photograph, you'll notice that the the same great photos or photos that you probably really like all tend to follow certain rules. Um, what I'm going to talk about today is just some of the basic rules of composition that when I say not, I don't even mean rules, but they're, they're more guidelines and, and how they can help make your photography better. Okay, so what is composition? Composition is the arrangement of your elements or subjects or items that are in your photograph, how, to, how you put those together to make one complete image. It's what you do photograph and how it relates to the other items in that photograph. There's no real rules or hard set rules that you have to follow every time. Um, some great photos don't follow any of, any of these rules, but they're great guidelines to get started with and to help you understand how to take a, a good photograph, I suppose would be the way I would put it. Okay, so the first one we're gonna talk about is the rule of thirds. I know I said these are guidelines, but the first one is called the rule of thirds. There's no getting around that, so we're gonna go with this one. Basically, it involves you dividing your photo up into a grid of nine rectangles. Um, what this will end up, you'll end up with really four lines. You'll have two vertical lines and two horizontal lines, and they'll divide it up into a grid. A lot of cameras actually do have a feature where you can uh, have this grid overlaying the shot. Basically, the, the idea of this is using these lines to put the subject or your important items on your scene or the important subjects in your scene along one of the lines on the grid would be the way I'd put it. Whether it's a tree that's vertical or whether it's a person, you can have them line up basically with. Okay, so the next rule is centered and symmetrical. So this goes right against the rule of thirds as such. It's all about lining your, your subject in the very center of your photograph. The same thing coming out of both sides or the same shape or the same line, it, it creates the symmetry based on the, the center of your photograph. This can be horizontal or vertical. I've found some of my favorite shots that I usually use this is usually reflections. I have a shot here, example of ducks. The boats were reflecting perfectly on the ground and I'd set up so that the line where the ocean or where the reflection started, sorry, on the water, um, I set it up where that line was basically the center point of the photograph. So that can be like kind of your example of symmetry for this shot. Okay, now the next compositional thing or theme that I kind of love, I that I love and is probably one of my favorites to set up, um, it's a frame within a frame. So your photograph is a frame. But you, you can do, or what I've done in certain situations, is you can use an element of a building or, or, or of something around you that frames up another shot. Um, this example I have here on this photograph is of me and Sarah at Ackle Island. Uh, we climbed up to the top. There's this nice little watchtower that was there from World War II. Um, Sarah sat in the in the window frame as such and framed up a beautiful shot of Ackle Beach in the background just behind it or the, the mountains of Ackle just behind her. So that's kind of the, the way I would work out a frame within a frame. It's really, really like not simple, but when it works, I feel that that shot works really well and it can be really, really quite striking. What I've found is a lot of people who don't necessarily know a lot about photography will look at something like that and be like, wow, that's amazing, you know? Um, leading lines. Okay, this one is we are on to what, what number are we on? Number four now. Number four, four, four. Uh, on to number four, we have leading lines. This is basically you're gonna guide your viewer through the image. So they'll come in, take a look at the shot, and there's gonna be one thing that makes you look, and the line that you set up with that shot will bring the viewer to the 
subject as such. So it can be pathways, it can be walls, it can be patterns um, on, on the pathways. All this sort of stuff can help lead your viewer to exactly where you want them to view on the photograph. I'll have some sort of example here as well. Okay, on to the next one. We're gonna talk about isolating the subject. So very simple technique uh, if you know what you're doing. This is one of those techniques where you're going to be putting your camera either into your aperture priority mode, if, if you're not using manual, putting it into aperture priority, opening up that aperture to well, as, as basically as wide open as you can open it and with the lens that you have. So I've got a, a 1.850 millimeter length that I've used for this. And what it does is it basically shallows your depth of field. And the item that you're focusing on is your subject. So. When you're working with portraits, this is the exact like perfect thing that you want. It just blurs that background, takes that in, the interest of the background out of the way and makes you focus right on that person that's in the photo right in front of you there. So basically those are like some of my compositional reels that I use probably the most. Um, there are way more, I would encourage you to go look them up. Um, if you want to see more of them in action, I encourage you to go check out my Instagram feed at Owen underscore Bell. Um, my website as well, owenbell.com. Both all be linked down below. Um, if you did enjoy the video, give me a little like, uh, subscribe, and definitely give me a follow on Instagram or comment. I'm always, always open for, for discussion on these topics. Um, as well as that, yeah, that's me for this week. I uh, hope you guys enjoyed it and I will see you next week for another vlog.